Hackers looking to sharpen their skills need to be careful of the targets they pick. In general, if you don't have permission to access the network, you definitely don't have permission to attack it. So it's much safer to use something that you actually own. If you have a Raspberry Pi laying around, it's perfect to use one of these to create a damn vulnerable Raspberry Pi, which is a deliberately vulnerable web server that's easy to practice that hacking tool you've been dying to try out. We'll show you how to do this on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While you may know the Raspberry Pi is a great hacking platform, it's also a great tool for practicing those same hacking skills. We've covered how to load Kali Linux up on a Raspberry Pi, but in this episode, we're going to show you how to load up a test server that's deliberately vulnerable, meaning it has all the different things you'll need to exploit in order to sharpen your hacking skills. Now this is great because the alternative used to be just trying to find something that was vulnerable to practice on, and it's pretty hit and miss. You can't exactly go to the store and just buy something you know is going to be vulnerable, so in this case you'll be able to kind of set up a lab and work in a controlled environment. Now in order to get started, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, although this works on the Pi Zero, the Pi Zero W, the Pi 3, the B3B+, Plus. it works on pretty much all of them, so you don't need to worry about being too picky about the Pi hardware that you're using. You'll also need an Ethernet connection in order to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, turn it on, and then access the vulnerable server. So let's dive in. Now the first step in setting up the damn vulnerable Raspberry Pi is to go to the whitedome.com.au website and navigate to the DVPi section. Once you're here, you will note that the damn vulnerable Raspberry Pi runs on all Pi, so you don't need to select the firmware by the type of Pi you have. Instead, you can just select the difficulty. Now, today we're going to pick the easy-ish, so we'll click on the Sticky Fingers DVPi3, and we'll load the site that will have the download link for us to go ahead and get this image. Now, I already have this, but once you have yours downloaded, you'll need to have a program like Etcher, which will allow you to write this to an SD card, or in this case, a micro SD card. Now, in order to do that, we'll take Etcher, which I have here, and we'll select the image that we downloaded in order to make sure that it's ready to be loaded onto the micro SD card. Here we have a 15, uh, actually a 16 gigabyte card, but you only need to have one that is more than, I think, three gigabytes in this case, uh, because that's how large, uh, I think it's two gigabytes and some change. So we'll go ahead and click on flash if we wanted to flash this, which I've already done, so it's gonna be a waste of time. But depending on the write speed of your card, this process will be, take between five minutes and 15 minutes. Uh, slower cards obviously going much slower. So as soon as this is done, we can go ahead and eject the card. And next we will need to take it out of the adapter take our Raspberry Pi and make sure that we have it unplugged before we plug it in. If we plug in the micro SD card before we uh, take the power out, this could cause it to corrupt the data on the card, which is really annoying. You have to FS check it in order to get it working again, so I do not advise that. So once the card is in, you can go ahead and power it again, and then plug it into the Ethernet cable in order to make sure it's connected to your local network. Back on your computer, you can go into a terminal window and scan your network in order to find something that has a port 22 open on the network, which is uh, SSH. Now we can type in nmap p22 and then 192.168.0.0 slash 26, 24. And as soon as this returns, we should see something on our network that does in fact have a port 22 open. Now the damn vulnerable Raspberry Pi has a port 22 open to allow us to communicate with us in here, well, for us to communicate with it. And here we can see that 192.168.0.33 has a port 22 open ready and waiting for us to connect to. Now we will type in SSH Pi at the address provided, and then type in the password raspberry. 
Now we should be inside, so we can type in dv-py status. And you can see the dvpy is stopped, so we'll type in dvpy start and Raspberry again. And this should begin to start the server and allow us to have the vulnerable uh, web application ready for us to attack. Now it's important to take this down before you plug this into a public network or take it with you because it is very vulnerable and could allow an attacker to infiltrate your Pi. But in our case, this is desirable because we want to attack it ourselves. So let's check it out by seeing if we can navigate to the website. We'll open a new page and then we'll just type in the IP address and see if it uh, redirects us to the vulnerable web application. Now here we can see that this is hosted on the Raspberry Pi and challenges us with a hack me if you can. So when you see this website, you are ready to begin targeting it for all of your capture the flag or hacking needs. A Raspberry Pi is a safe and ethical target for anyone who wants to get started practicing their hacking skills. That being said, it's also a lot cheaper than a lawyer if you were to get caught practicing these same skills on a public network. Now you can also use this to start a capture the flag game, which is a great way of getting friends together to practice these same skills as well. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on the show, make sure to send me a message on Twitter. We'll see you next time.